Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your favorite SEO guru, brown guy, Josh, whatever you want to call me. I don't care. Um, I wanted to make a video <clears throat> today about philosophy, ethics, kind of just, just talking about certain things in business. Um, or at least I kind of want to do some of these videos that regard you know business thought and business thinking. And one of the things I wanted to talk about was reflecting on what I would do differently if I were restarting my SEO business. And some of the things that I wish I had known um, and been ready for when I started. So this video is for you if you're looking to start an SEO business and we're not gonna talk about bogus information, doohickey, meaningless nonsense that you would look up if you looked up on YouTube what to know about an SEO business and it's going to tell you about like, oh, make sure to follow up with your client. Like, who cares? We, we, like, like a third grader knows to follow up with their clients if they're in at all experience, they have any experience at all with sales. It's, it's a no brainer. But let's talk a little, about a little bit of the things that I wish I had really known and understood before I started this business. So the first thing that I wish that I had known or been ready for was the commitment necessary to run a business. Now this is more or less, this is applicable to any business. This is applicable to whether you're starting a plumbing business or whether you're starting um, a startup company that does, you know, a SaaS startup or something, you know, this is a, a same principle is you need to know what you're committing to. Okay. I, I wish I had known, I started my business when I was 16. Okay. And, and it was more or less out of, kind of a need or a desire to show off to my friends. Um, so the reasons for starting this business were a little bit funky and not really the, the strongest reasons. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm leaving this industry with some, with, with a bit of regret that I'm leaving it, but also a real weight off my chest knowing that I don't need to consistently keep this up, right? So, and I'll explain a little bit more as to what happened, uh, why I'm leaving the industry, but one of the things that I do want to touch upon is that when I started my business, I was 16 years old and I didn't really have any reason to start it other than the fact that I wanted to show off to people. And when you're 16 years old, that's a very reasonable um, conclusion, a very reasonable desire is to show off to your friends, you know, I was in high school, right? Uh, but as I got older, and I'm 20 now, uh, as I got older and I started to live on my own and I started to experience what most people would consider the real world, um, that's a dumb reason. <laughs> it's stupid. Like I, I, At this point in my life, I don't care as much about what people think about me anymore. Like My sphere of concern for other people's input, as Louis C.K. has said, is tightening. You know, I don't really care so much about if people think that I'm like a, a rich guy or if I'm a, you know, a, a loser. I don't, you know, it's whatever, dude. And, and you shouldn't either. Um, if you're, if you're like maybe 18 or 17 or maybe a little bit younger, you know, or if you're a little older, but I think if I were to restart my SEO business, I would first of all, really research marketing as a whole. And I think that's one of my bigger regrets is that I, I specified too much on SEO because I thought, in some ways I thought it was a quick way to get money and in, it, in many ways it was. It was. I did get money pretty quick, quickly and I did make my bones as a businessman running an SEO business. I mean, we've created over 100, almost $120,000 in revenue over the last couple of years, um, probably about $150,000 since I started the business and you know what? I, some people will say that's not a lot. Some people will say that's, wow, that's a lot. I think it's okay. I think it's a good number. I think it's a good place to start. Um, and it can certainly be a lot better. But I think the reason why I didn't get a lot better is because I didn't really believe in the product that I was selling. And I didn't really believe in the service that I was providing for people. Sure, it's a good thing for a lot of businesses to be ranked number one. I have no doubt about that. I've gotten businesses ranked number one and I've generated them lots of calls and I've gotten lots of thank yous for it. And I have some good reviews on Google for it. Right, that I'm not really concerned about. I just don't think that it's really the most ethical way of marketing and advertising, um, because you're you're manipulating a search engine, which in itself, really, if if I'm manipulating my local town's search for a plumber near me, who cares? But on a much larger sense, right? 
this is for when you're kind of thinking about taking on bigger projects. I need to manipulate the search engines, recycling weird bogus jargon content and then spinning it into articles that seem original and you, you just, you're kind of doing what the media does with news reports, you know, like CNN, they take like a study or something and then they just highlight on one specific thing and exaggerate it to a large degree where it's just nonsense. I think that's kind of, it's almost clickbaity in some ways and I think I, I just get annoyed at that. So I kind of don't like other SEOs uh, in the industry and I'm sure the feeling's mutual with just about any industry you, you, you enter, but I don't like the other SEOs and I don't like the other marketers um, because they're all selling themselves, right? And it's just, it, 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 ugh, like, like, get away from me, you know? And, and when I, now as a contractor uh, and I get phone calls from like Angie's Leads and all these other like lead service providers and SEO companies, I'm like, dude, get away, from, get, shoot, get away, get away, get away from me. I want to see your face. I don't want to hear your voice ever, you know? <laughs> Um, but I wish that I had known a little bit more about what I was getting into is what I guess I will say and, and, and get ready for the commitment because a business is not a job and, and, and it's also not necessarily a career and what you will do till you die. So when you go into the business world or if you're thinking about starting an SEO business, don't think that you have to die with this company and don't think that it's going to only be about a year or two till you get like the numbers that you want. It's probably going to be a lot longer. Chances are I'm about at the three and a half, almost three and a half year mark of since I started kind of going on my own and stuff. Um, about three years since a little over three years since I started JC search, but almost about three and a half since I became this marketer, developer, web guy. Um, but I wish that I had I'd chosen something that I would have stuck to a little bit longer. Um, so be ready for that and consider probably spending the next five years on your business. What's it going to look like in five years? What do you want it to look like and whatnot? Do you think that you will stick with the same business for five years? And if the answer is no, maybe you should consider a new business model if you really want to go down the business route. Um, the next thing that I wish I would have done that I would have done differently is I would have focused more on finances and accounting um, more so than actual talent of SEO and the reason for this is just from a business standpoint a business needs to be profitable it needs to be able to generate money and I've done a good job at that I think I've done a good job in sales and I've kept the business alive for, for, for a few years now you know and we have had multiple staff members some have come and gone and I still have my staff employed and, you know, we're still writing off of our, our business savings and our business checkings. You know, we're still doing okay. I just wish that I had been a little bit more familiar with the business lingo because the business lingo is what's going to help you with your accountants. Uh, it's also going to help you if you decide to do some more serious bookkeeping. Uh, and it's just good for you to know because now you have an understanding of your company's um, balance sheets, your income and where things are going and stuff. So I wish that I had invested a little bit more time to study uh, business accounting and you know small business finance, basically. I wish that I had done that a bit more. Um, and, and so if you're thinking about starting an SEO business, just know that you're running a business. It's an SEO business, okay? It's not just an, you're not just an SEO guy. You're an SEO business owner, meaning you need to understand your money or your finances you need to know where your money is going and where it's coming from and you need to know why it's coming and why it's leaving. So understand that. The next thing I wish I would have done differently is I wish that I had done a week by week scheduling system. So I have a bunch of journals and they're in my room so I don't feel like getting them. But what I typically do is I'll do something like this. I'll, I'll have like a to-do list, right, for the day. And that usually gets me by. I've tried doing this before. I have tried using like planners for the day to like schedule my like my work hour by hour. Um, and I don't know, like, you know, I, I've done it. I, obviously, there's a lot of days where I haven't done it. So I don't know if this is the most effective strategy for me. I mean, again, like I, I have tried doing this, 
I just don't like it because one, my schedule changes so much throughout the day, especially now that I'm a contractor and I don't necessarily have, um, you know, I could be at a job site for an extra five hours when I didn't want to. And I think that's may, maybe um, something that I need to look into for self-discipline or, um, you know, discipline and, and, and self-regulation of how long I spend at a specific job or how long I spend on a specific task. And I need to monitor that and stick to my schedule more uh, more closely and it needs to be tighter. Or I'm just not that type of a guy. And I should be working with just bullet points throughout the day and just as long as I get them done, I'll get them done. Maybe the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Um, but I wish that I had done this for the week. Now, I've noticed that whenever I post tasks for the whole week, I, my business has always been way more effective. We've been way more effective and way more productive. We've gotten way more problem solved and we've gotten, we, we, we've done just a lot better when we plan week by week. So I think that if I were to do this business again, I would commit to at least coming up with like a quarter plan, a quarterly plan, a week by week plan, and then a day by day plan. And the quarterly plan is kind of foggy because you know you don't necessarily know what's going on in that quarter. Um, I mean, you can't micromanage everything. So you need to kind of just put goals, maybe like three, five goals. Like, okay, we our goal this quarter is reach out to 600 business owners uh, and uh, 200 of which are doctors with staff members of less, with less than five staff. You know, just what I'm trying to say is, you come up with some goals that are tangible, that are smart goals, right? So a specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-sensitive goals. I think that's it. So, you know what I mean? Then you break it down into week by week, be a bit specific, and then you're day by day. Uh, and it's a lot of planning, yeah. It's a lot of logistics. That, that, that's the point. Business is not an easy thing. You need to be on top of everything. You're a business owner. Again, you're the administrator, the owner. You're the, the head of a company, and you need to run it with a lot of discipline. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you a quick story. This is not something I've ever, ever once in my life before I started to do this. Before, really, this year, I never thought I would get to this point. I never once in my entire life had dreamt that, like, oh, my God, I'm going to be a business owner and I'm going to be doing all these cool things like managing all these different people, looking at these finance charts and stuff like that. I never imagined myself doing that. I wanted to be a computer programmer when I was in middle school. Then as I got older, I wanted to be an EMT, right? I, I never really envisioned myself being a business owner. So doing logistics has always been a struggle for me because I'm not a logistics-driven guy. I'm a very sporadic and adventurous and free-spirited type of person or whatever. Uh, but I did get better at this. I did get a lot better at uh, discipline and logistics and management. So that would be the next thing I, I would I would really want to do over again if I if I had the chance. Um, what am I on? Like number three or four? I I mentioned getting in what myself knowing what I would get myself into. Focus on finances, plan week by week. So number four. So number four is I would schedule regular meetings. Um, with my staff members, I would like to, I wish I could have scheduled in the beginning, regular meetings, maybe like once a month or once a week, maybe that once a week probably would be the limit for me because I know there are some bigger companies that like do once every day or once every other day, but I think that's a little bit too micromanaged and I'm not a business manager. Again, I'm the business owner or maybe administrator. So I'm doing the more macro level. So I don't necessarily, A, I might not have time to see all of my staff members or, or get in touch with all of them. And B, I like to leave it up to themselves because I think that they should be trusted to be autonomous as much as possible. Obviously, the reason why I, I'm, there's a reason why I'm saying that I wish I had done a little bit more scheduled uh, meetings and maybe once a week or at least once a month. And it's because I've noticed that whenever I at least come in and check up on my staff members, the morale is boosted a little bit. And this is very, very, very important for you if you're a business owner or if you're thinking of starting a business, is that the morale of your company is so important. You need to understand your morale. And what I mean by that is the morale typically is, is raised when 
a company owner or the leader, a strong leader, not a weak leader, but a strong leader with good communication, with some empathy, with understanding of fairness, um, doesn't have to be a good company leader, in my opinion, doesn't have to be liked or feared. I don't think that, that there's a, you know, there's two schools of thoughts in management and it's, you know, Machiavellian. And this is, I think, more or less for power in general. It's Machiavellian and Solomon. Um, and I, I heard about this in a book somewhere and I'm forgetting the name of it, but you have people that are like, I'm going to run a business based off of fear or maybe not necessarily fear, like cutting people's heads off these days. So if you don't do that, but more or less like with strictness, with authority, I'm the business owner and you will, you will, you will show me respect regardless. And there's people that are like, I want to run a business where I'm fair and liked. I think the truth again is somewhere in the middle. So I like to think of myself as being a fair business owner. I, I crack jokes, you know, I'm, I like to think I'm a pretty easygoing guy. But I, that's my, my goal is not to be liked, but it's also not to be feared or intimidated by my employees. You never want to have your employees feel like they're being intimid that they're intimidated by you. I think the most important is to be respected. So you need to be respected by your staff members and scheduling weekly or monthly meetings shows that you have some interest in their lives. It shows that you are not forgetting about them. Yes, I could be paying my staff constantly and they'll probably not really dislike me for that. But, you know, when I take the initiative to say, hey, how are you? Or, hey, like, let's talk about this and, and do you need anything from my end to help make your life a little bit easier? It shows that I'm at least engaged with them. And that goes a long way when you're running a business. So definitely scheduling weekly meetings. If you have an in-person business, let's say you're thinking about hiring an office assistant, this can be applicable too. Maybe you don't have to, you know, you might be like, hey, how are you? You know, and give 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 him or her, you know, coffee in the morning and, and do your, your typical things. But sit down with them. Go over the books. If you have your office manager and they have all the books for you and, and of call logs, just say, hey, Let's go over some meetings together. Let, let's combine our brain power to maybe move our company forward so that way it can benefit both you because then your wages will go up. And, you know, me obviously because then my profits will go up and my company is going to do better. Um, the next thing I wish that I would have learned or wish that I would have done differently, I guess the next thing I wish that I would have done would have been to focus on partnerships and networking. Um, in the big, before the pandemic, this was like a no-brainer for me. I would go to the Chamber of Commerce, the Manhattan Chamber of Commerce, and I would shake hands with business owners. And this is really how I made my bones in social development and in business networking. I was 17 years old when I went to my first networking event, and I got made fun of because I was doing something stupid. Um, guy had asked me to come up and, and um, give a pitch for the company or whatever. Uh, we were practicing our pitches and I, I had no idea what to do. So what I did was I went up to the, this whiteboard and I just drew out like with like little cartoons, like stick figures, like, okay, so this is me. This is your company, and I just tried. I made a fool out of myself, and the guy was like, "Dude, you're like a little kid." Um, and to some extent, I was like, "All right, you know what? Fuck you. I don't care. This is who I am." But I, I know what he was saying. It was a little bit childish. It was kind of goofy. Yeah, I could have done a lot better. But the, the importance of networking is so crucial because, and, it, and it's also overlooked. Because the first thing is that in-person networking means that I get to shake someone's hand and I don't know if people do that anymore because of COVID because everyone's bugged out about getting sick or I don't know what people are doing these days. I'm not going to make this into a political video, but you used to be able to shake hands, you know, share a drink. I was 18 years old and I was drinking the wine and the beers and stuff at the Chamber of Commerce, but don't worry about that. Um, you know, you would, you would hang out with other business owners. And I remember I talked to a lot of people and I got really familiar with what business was like. I got familiar with how people try and deceive you a bit, how people um, don't know what they're doing, some of them. And you just get to talk to a lot of people. 
And now, since COVID happened, so the two things that stopped me from networking, one, COVID, two, COVID. I was going to say two, I moved to a different state, but I, I actually did attend networking events before the pandemic. So it was really COVID. Um, and I could get back into it if I really wanted to, because I'm pretty sure the Chamber of Commerce, the one that's uh, only about a, a half a mile or whatever away from where I live, I'm pretty sure it reopened. But I don't see a need to. I don't really feel like doing it anymore. Uh, just because, again, the, I, I didn't, you know, going back to number one, I don't really have an ambition to grow this business as much as I used to. But I wish that I had definitely stuck to networking. Even during the pandemic, there were options to, like, you know, attend Zoom networking events and stuff. And I kind of attended a couple here and there, but I didn't really make an effort to. So if you are thinking about starting an SEO business, join a chamber of commerce, join some sort of business organization, network with people, attend meetings, attend seminars, even if the seminars suck. Listen, most of the seminars in SEO in this industry are garbage, especially the ones that are free, especially the ones that are free and the ones that guarantee that you are going to learn everything you need to know about SEO in the next hour or two hours or whatever it is. It's a pre-recorded bogus seminar, or even if it's not pre-recorded, it's probably still bogus. Um, now I'm just kind of hating, but uh, I, I would definitely put an emphasis on, on attending these networking events and seminars because you can meet a lot of great people, and I wish that I had done that definitely um, and taken it more seriously than I did um, over the last couple of years. So those are my kind of five things I would do over again if I were to restart my SEO business. So moving forward, I would like to create an SEO course uh, that goes over everything that I know about SEO and running a business and stuff because I'm kind of doing that as like my parting gift. Right now it's December. My knees are giving me a little bit of trouble. Uh, so I'm pretty much done doing contracting work till 2022. I have enough money saved up where I could live December without working, without too much worry. I, I, I could do all right. Um, so yeah, with that being said, I wish you guys all a great Thanksgiving. I wish you guys all happy holidays. Hanukkah's coming up. Uh, Kwanzaa. I've never met a person that celebrated Kwanzaa in my life. I've never. I don't know. But if you you celebrating Kwanzaa, then power to you, man. And, Silent minority, I guess. Um, Christmas, obviously. New Year's, Lunar New Year. Every you know, you already know the vibes. This is happy times right now. But yeah, stay safe and enjoy your your winter, I guess, or wherever the hell, whatever it is you're gonna celebrate over the next couple of months. See you guys.